Hi guys, welcome to Embedded Systems video tutorial. In this video, we will cover the topic how to choose an RTOS, that is how to choose an real-time operating system from module 5. So the decision of choosing an RTOS for an embedded design is very crucial. A lot of factors need to be analyzed carefully before making a decision on the selection of an RTOS. These factors can be either functional requirements or non-functional requirements. We will cover these points through this video. First of all, we look upon functional requirements. And the first one, it is the processor support. It is not necessary that all RTOS support all kinds of processor architecture. It is essential to ensure the processor support by the RTOS. So all the real-time operating system will not support all types of processor architecture. So based on the features, based on the support provided by the real-time operating system, we should select the processor appropriately based on the RTOS. So we should look upon the processor support given by the RTOS. Next, we move on to the memory requirements. The OS requires both ROM memory and RAM memory, read-only memory and random access memory. Here, the ROM memory is used for holding the OS files and it is normally stored in a non-volatile memory like flash. The non-volatile memory means that in a non-volatile memory, after uh, a power cycle also, we can recover the data. The data will not be lost. But in random access memory, it is a volatile memory, so it constantly requires the power. Otherwise, the data will be lost. So in ROM memory, it is used for holding the operating system files and RAM memory is used for loading the operating system services. Since embedded systems are memory constrained, it is essential to evaluate the minimal ROM and RAM requirements for the OS under consideration. Next, we move on to the real-time capabilities. It is not mandatory that the operating system for all embedded systems need to be real-time. And all embedded operating systems are real-time in behavior. The task and process scheduling policies. It plays an important role in the real-time behavior of an OS. The process should be scheduled in such a format that there should be a real-time capability for the real-time operating system. We should analyze the real-time capabilities of the OS under consideration and the standards met by the operating system for real-time capabilities. A real-time capability or behavior is mandatory one for the real-time operating system and it should be analyzed based on its standards. Next, we move on to the kernel and interrupt latency. In kernel and interrupt latency, the kernel of the OS may disable interrupts while executing certain services and it may lead to interrupt latency. For an embedded system whose response requirements are high, this latency should be minimal. Here we can see this interrupt source interrupt controller and CPU and interrupt response. Inside CPU, we have operating system, operating system interrupt latency. So the time duration taken between the interrupt arrived, the, given by the interrupt source and the interrupt response. This time duration is called interrupt latency and this interrupt latency should be minimal for real-time operating system. So the delay when a service is when the operating system is currently working on a service when another another service should be processed or we call it as interrupt. So the time duration for solving that is should be minimal. That is that latency or delay should be minimal. Response should be very quick and real time. That is mandatory for a real time operating system. So we should analyze the kernel and latency for a real time operating system. Next, we move on to the fifth one, that is the inter-process communication and task synchronization. Here, the implementation depends on the OS kernel. Certain kernels may provide bunch of options, while certain kernels will give only limited options. 
and certain kernels implement policy for avoiding priority inversion issues in resource sharing. Priority inversion issues means sometimes the pri higher priority task will be delayed and lower priority task will be resolved. So there comes a priority inversion. Like uh, normally the higher priority task should be solved first. Then only we, sh we should go for the lower priority. Any inversion occurs, there is an issue in the resource sharing. So these should be controlled by appropriate policies. Kernel should have that policies. So the inter-process communication, communication and the task synchronization, synchronization of task, scheduling of task are all depend upon the OS kernel. So the implementation of the OS kernel is a mandatory one while we are analyzing the real-time operating system. Next, we move on to the modularization support. Most of the operating system provide a bunch of features. At times, it may not be necessary for an embedded product for its functioning. Sometimes some features should be selected for the, based upon the needs. It is very useful if the OS supports modularization wherein which the developer can choose the essential modules and recompile the OS image for functioning. Based on the needs of the embedded system, if it is a modularized format, the developer can easily choose these features as modules and combine them. So Windows CE is a highly modular operating system. Next, we move on to the seventh one, that is support for networking and communication. The OS kernel may provide stack implementation and driver support for a bunch of communication, interfaces and networking. Ensure that the OS under consideration provides support for all the interfaces required by the embedded product. There should be enough support for both networking and communication of the real-time operating system should be analyzed before choosing an RTOS. Next, we move on to the eighth one, development language support. Certain operating system include the runtime libraries required for running application written in languages like Java and C Sharp or should have built-in components. That is, we require JVM for Java application. For developing Java application, we require Java virtual machine and .NET Combat framework for Microsoft .NET applications. So these runtime libraries should be present for supporting, for developing the applications. If it is not there, if these components are not there, then we can check the availability of the same from a third party vendor for the OS under consideration. And next we move on to the non-functional requirements. First one is the custom developed or off the shelf. Depending on the OS requirement, it is possible to go for complete development of an operating system suiting the embedded system needs or we can call this off the shelf or readily available operating system. We can use a readily available operating system off the shelf like commercial product or an open source product or we can develop it based on the needs. But these decisions, these all both decisions are based on the development cost, licensing fees for OS, development time and availability of skilled resources. So these all factors, these four factors should be considered before taking a decision whether we require a readily available operating system or we should develop an operating system based on the embedded system needs. Second, we move on to the cost. The total cost for developing or buying the OS and maintaining it in terms of commercial product and custom build needs is to be evaluated. So the cost that we should take for developing the OS or buying the OS, both should be compared and the decision should be made before that we should analyze it and understand it. So cost also plays an important role as a non-functional requirement while choosing an RTOS. The third one is the development and debugging tools availability. The availability of development and debugging tools is a critical decision making factor in the selection of an OS for embedded design. Certain operating systems may be superior in performance, but the availability of tools for supporting the development may be limited. Explore. We should explore the different tools available for the OS under consideration. 
as we should find out the essential tools that support development debugging of OS, analyze it, and we should keep maintain these tools for developing the embedded system. Next, we move on to the ease of use. How easy it is to use a commercial RTOS is another important feature that needs to be considered in the RTOS selection. How it is easy and efficient for the user to use their embedded design. The embedded product should be very easily used, can be easily used. For that, we should check its ease of use. Next comes the after sales. For a um, commercial embedded RTOS, after sales is in the form of email and on-call services extra for bug fixing and critical patch updates and support for production issues should be analyzed. This is after the sale, uh, we should analyze for its maintenance, checking for bug. If it bugs are present, uh, we should debug it with the help of email and on-call services. This all comes uh, after the product is developed and it is given for the customer to use. So the video summary, how to choose an RTOS, it requires both functional requirements and non-functional requirements. In functional requirements, first one is the processor support, second one is the memory requirements, third one is the real-time capabilities, fourth one is the kernel and interrupt latency, fifth one is interpress communication task synchronization, sixth one is the modularization support, seventh one is the support for networking and communication. And And the eighth one is the development language support. And here we go with the non-functional requirements. That is custom developed or off the shelf. And second one is the cost. Third one is the development and debugging tools. Av availability and ease of use. And after sales. So these are the both functional requirements and non-functional requests that we should consider before choosing an RTOS. Thank you. I hope you understood the lecture.